It's a sunny day in San Francisco. We set up a table by the water and asked people this question. If it's the year 1960 and you had $10 to give to science, would you spend it on A, developing an affordable treatment for diabetes, or B, figuring out how bacteria protect themselves? The majority of people we surveyed wanted to spend their money on a diabetes treatment, but what really happened 50 years ago? The government decided to spend money on figuring out how bacteria protect themselves against viruses. The National Science Foundation, the NSF, and the National Institutes of Health, NIH, are two government agencies that allocate tax dollars to scientists. And they decided to fund groups of researchers who thought that studying how microbes protect themselves was an interesting question. At the time, there was no way of knowing how this basic research could affect human health. They were simply curious about understanding something about bacteria biology. So what did the scientists find? Normally, when a virus enters a bacteria, it adds its own DNA to that of the bacteria. In doing so, the virus takes over the bacteria and uses it to make more viruses. Scientists found that bacteria protect themselves from viruses by selectively cutting the viral DNA. This basic finding led to a scientific revolution. Scientists learned how to cut specific chunks of DNA and they could use this technique to move genes around. They could even move human DNA into bacteria. And because bacteria are very good at making more of themselves, scientists can use them to make large quantities of human proteins from the human gene that they introduced. So why was this technique useful for modern medicine? Well, one breakthrough was the efficient production of human insulin by introducing the human insulin gene into bacteria. This was a very significant advancement in diabetes treatment. Before using bacteria to produce large quantities of human insulin, insulin was expensive, unsafe, and less effective because it was harvested from fetal cows. In fact, the first person to get an injection of cow insulin suffered from a severe allergic reaction. Because of a long line of federally funded basic research, human insulin is now an affordable treatment for diabetes. By asking how bacteria protect themselves, the scientists discovered that bacteria can cut DNA. This discovery was developed into a basic technique used in thousands of labs around the world to create new knowledge and to ask new questions that have led to all kinds of therapies and technologies, including insulin, DNA fingerprinting and biofuels, the human genome, growth hormones, cancer drugs, stroke medication, vaccines, HIV meds, antibiotics, and many, many more. Given enough time and funding, who knows what is to come? Many other health benefits and current discoveries would have been nearly impossible without federal funding for all kinds of basic research. Basic research is an investment in our future. It broadens our understanding of the world we live in, and the potential benefits are limitless. Unfortunately, science funding in the U.S. has plateaued, decreasing purchasing power, and significantly hurting our competitiveness and innovation. You may not know it, but you and your tax dollars are part of the discovery process. Thanks to you, scientists discovered that bacteria can cut DNA. And thanks to you, insulin, other drugs and diagnostic tools have been developed and are helping patients. So thank you for supporting basic research. We are the scientists who depend on you. And we are excited for the future that lies ahead.